So we uh, we came into the mission. Uh, you know, this is my first mission. It was many of our uh, first experiences, both in an operational environment and with the UN. I think we came in with some, you know, preconceived notions and assumptions that were found to be um, not correct. I mean, we assumed that the UN would be a coherent, well-functioning entity, which it wasn't. There's very disparate, different national groups inside the UN, and the, there's a very more sort of less rigorous approach to the way orders are given and the way things are carried out and followed through. And so it took us a while to sort of get used to which bits of the UN were more effective than others and, and all of that. Uh, we also assumed that as an assistance mission we were coming in to, to help um, not only a government but a people who would be uh, enthusiastic about that. Now, of course, the, the general population uh, were largely enthusiastic, but the, the Rwandan Patriotic Army were not enthusiastic. Uh, I think we were seen as a uh, inhibitor for them setting up their new regime, uh, carrying out whatever payback that they saw was just in terms of um, people that they were sort of progressively sort of hunting out as they as asserted themselves as the new masters of Rwanda or the, in their minds probably the returning you know, masters of Rwanda. So instead of having free access around the countryside and instead of being... Um, you know, either tasked or sought for support from the RPA, it became a very standoffish relationship, um, a very suspicious relationship, and, uh, and and frankly, it became just very difficult in that uh, our movement around the country was regularly inhibited by the RPA. Um, you know, we'd been trained to build roadblocks and things with great, vast resources. Uh, a Rwandan needs a milk crate, a piece of string, and an AK-47, and that piece of string across the road backed up by an AK-47 will stop a large UN convoy for as long as you want it to. Um, and if you can't negotiate your way past the guy holding up the piece of string, um, you know, the chances are you're not going to get any help from UN headquarters to, to alleviate the situation. So there was a lot of these frustrating sort of situations that we were encountering um, that at times were resolved quite benignly and quite quickly, but at other times, you know, ended up in quite tense sort of standoffs that took sort of many hours to resolve. So as we worked our way through the mission, um, you know, we became less and less enamoured of the RPA, and by the time we left, we, uh, you know, were quite... Um, oh, I think many of us were very, not only sort of suspicious of them, but were quite sort of bitter about the way that part of the mission had played out. And I know the next rotation came thinking that we had somehow contributed to the to the ill will, but I think that was probably naive and came to pass when um, the Kibaya massacre happened, and uh, you know the hands of the RPA. So, yeah, it was a it was a it was a thing that you know unfolded and dawned on us slowly that it wasn't the way we had assumed it would be, and. It took a while for us to really get a sense of, you know, what it was.